it should come as no surprise that as a species, we generate a lot of waste. Now, not all of that waste is inherently bad. Much of it is food waste, which will happily degrade in a month or two. It's the circle of life that we're used to. But not everything can be broken down in a short time. Plastics, for example, if left in the ground, will take hundreds or thousands of years to break down. One such plastic you're all probably familiar with is styrofoam. It's used in all sorts of packaging and insulation applications, and you probably had some in your holiday presents or in the cups and plates you may have used at your office party. But a, about a third of our landfills are filled with styrofoam, which is a crazy amount when you think about it. So obviously we need a better way to deal with this than just sticking it in a hole in the ground. For those of you who've ever had a pet reptile or other insectivorous animal like koi, may recognize these guys. They're superworms, or Zephobus moria. People often make the mistake of calling them mealworms, but mealworms are a totally different species. Both mealworms and superworms are the larval stage of a darkling beetle. Uh, the confusion arises in the fact that the Zephobas look like a giant version of the much smaller mealworms. The beetle stage of the two species look totally different though. So when a paper came out showing that mealworms would not only eat styrofoam, but were somehow able to break it down, I immediately was interested. Conveniently, my friend asked me to watch his lizard for him over the holidays. So I told him about the paper, and when he dropped off the lizard, he brought some extra superworms so I could try it out. Now, the paper specifically talked about mealworms, so I had no idea if superworms would behave in the same way, since remember, they're a totally different species. So to get a sense of how quickly they ate, I put five superworms in a large glass jar and added a one and a half gram block of styrofoam. Within seconds, they went straight for the styrofoam and started eating. What's cool is you can actually hear them eating the styrofoam because it crackles as it breaks in their little mandibles. After 24 hours, you can see that just five worms had actually managed to get all the way through the block. Five worms are great, but they can only do so much, so now that I know they have no problem eating it, I added 25 more worms to speed up the process. After a day, they were starting to make serious progress, and each day after that, they kept going. They take sort of a synchronized break every few hours for a few hours. Then sort of all at once, they all start eating again. Because styrofoam has no water in it, I would spray the jar with a few squirts of deionized water a couple of times a day. If I spray some on the styrofoam, I can get them to start eating again whenever I want, and they'll try and climb up the walls to have a drink before going back to eating. After a week, you can see the styrofoam is a husk of what it once was. Even after the first day, I started to notice little white bits in the bottom of the jar. As they ate, the pile got larger. However, during what I thought was a break, I noticed them eating it. I know the idea of something eating its own poo is gross to us, but this is actually really common in nature. We have really long digestive tracts filled with different kinds of bacteria so we can get the most nutrients out of our food in one go. These bugs only have a very basic and straight digestive tract. And remember, all they're eating is styrofoam. It makes sense that it could take a couple of passes to actually break it down. Over time, the color of the powder changed from white to more beige. This is a clear indication that it is actually being broken down, and I know what you're thinking, couldn't it be remnants from what the worms were eating before I put them in there? Well, maybe, in part, but the stuff seemed to go in cycles of white to beige, then fresh white, and repeat every day or two. So they were systematically deconstructing and breaking down the plastic. But what is actually breaking it down? Is it the worms? Well. Probably no. In the original paper, they point to bacteria living in the worm's digestive tract. And this isn't really surprising. Bacteria are incredible at breaking things down. Back in 2009, the then teenage Daniel Bird isolated bacteria that, in high concentrations, could break down high-density polyethylene, the stuff used to make plastic shopping bags. So after a week, I did a weigh-in on the plastic to see how much they ate. After checking to make sure all the worms were out, the final weight came in at 0.8 grams, down from the original 1.5. The chunk was about 86 cubic centimeters originally in volume, and weighed, originally, 1.5 grams, so it had a density of about 0.018 grams per cubic centimeter, or 18 kilograms per cubic meter. So, if they ate 0.7 grams of styrofoam in a week, they ate about 38 cubic centimeters. If we were to do this industrially, we wouldn't be using 30 worms. We'd be using more like a swimming pool worth. Let's say that, conservatively, you're going to use a million worms. You'd be able to process cubic kilometers of the stuff in a couple of weeks. And since they can live for about a year, that's a lot of styrofoam. And all that is from a single batch of worms in our theoretical recycling plant. A proper facility would have multiple pits. 
This could be a great addition to current recycling plants. They would turn out usable soil, and in theory you could eat the worms, but I wouldn't advise it. If nothing else, this needs to be explored at a larger scale and could well be an easy solution to a global problem. Well, that's all for this video. I hope you've enjoyed. If you have, be sure to subscribe, rate, and leave a comment with what you thought. Also, if you're interested in behind-the-scenes content and just extra content, you can find more at the Facebook page or on Instagram. If you're interested in some of my research or some merch, including hats that make you study faster and some nanoparticles, uh, my site is the place for that. And if you're interested in watching more videos, you can see in the top left I show how to make copper sulfide conductive nanostructures, and in the top right I show how to make highly fluorescent carbon quantum dots in your home oven.